Um, my name is Amber. I'm uh, seven years old, uh, then born in Bosnia. And when I was seven years old, the war, the war broke down. And uh, I remember from a playing with those action figures, we could actually find the bazookas in the snow. At one time when I was uh, seven, so there was someone on the door. And when I like looking up, so I only can see a man who was turned around and he had, uh, he had uh, the white jacket and the brown jeans. So I opened the door and he turned around. He had a beard like this, he had a weapon. He asked me, is there any Muslims living here? I said, I don't know, sir, I'm just seven years old. You have to ask my mom. So I, I start, started to like, uh, uh, sorry to make, uh, I was like hurting them argue. Maybe try. No? Oh, hold it closer to your mouth. All right. Okay, it's let's like try that. First of all. <laughs> all right. No, so the soldiers, so I heard them argue. And I heard it, the soldiers said, you have only five minutes, otherwise I'm going to shoot you all. Today, I am my own son, and he's actually just 10. And when I'm looking at him right now, and I was like thinking of, damn, I was that age. How, he feel, how I felt that time. So I remember that day that we just packed. We moved to our grandmother's place. Uh, we, we eat per month. We eat a piece of bread, a little bit of oil, a little bit of pepper on it. And then our grandmother, she gave us a a little bit piece of bread, a little bit oil, and a little bit sugar on it. So we could just feel the sweetness as a dessert. And uh, it was tough. But one day, so my father came at home and said, hey, there's a way out. There's a way out. And we say, yeah. So he sold the car for four bus ticket. And on that day, so we were like, we were escaping from Bosnia. By bus. And, what's that? By bus. By bus, okay. yeah. Okay, how long was uh, that? Yeah. <laughs> so at, we when it was like for the escaping so we started to to go to that bus station that day and during the war there was two different vans one was blue one was red and if the one of the vans catch you up they're gonna put you on the they're gonna take all the men and the boys to the front line and they'll like put it in the war so just before the bus station on the like on the corner so the blue van came the soldiers gaze out from the vans they step out and ask my father and my brother, so where you guys think you're going? And in the middle of the street, we just started to cry. We're just like, please, please, let us go. My father is sick. My brother is sick. Please let us go. And, and somehow they let us go. So we went to this bus station. And you know, you don't, you don't get a seat on that bus. Every, every people wanted to escape. And we went like to the bus. We came to the bus and we thought, OK, this now is like for free. But the thing was, just before the border to Croatia, because my father had a heart surgery, so he got even more sick. So he, he actually started to die. So just before the border, my father is actually dying. So the people are starting to scream in the bus, like, stop the bus, stop the bus, the man is dying, the man is dying. And the people like stopping bus nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. It was dark, I remember, and it was like, okay, what will happen? Suddenly, we could just saw the lights. It was from the UNHCR. And the soldiers there, they come in and say, hey, what was happening? They say, Beep, the man is dying. So they took all our family in that jeep, and they drove us to the hospital. And at that hospital, father got medicine, at, and he better. But he heard that on that bus, when they come to the border, the people was tortured. So he said that we had luck that he, that he was dying, otherwise I'm not been sitting here. Wow. And that was like that. And then from the Croatia, we went to Hungary, and then from Hungary, we went to Poland, and then from Poland, they say there's a boat to Sweden, and then we took that boat, and we, we finally went to the Sweden. And in Sweden, we were exposed in the southeast uh, Sweden, where they're all immigrants the same. So we, I went to the primary school with 95%, and it was very hard for me to adapt to the Swedish society. The only, see, only people in the room I could see, they're almost the same people as myself. So my possibility to be someone and to become someone, what's not even enough. I had no dreams. I had dreams to be playing in NBA. There, I had a dream. But I know it was so, so, so long, far, far, far away from me. And uh, I started, my rescue was sports. I started to work with basketball. I started with the basketball, trying to wait to 
to work with myself, but also with the kids. So from 97 to 2007, I just worked with the kids day in, day out. And I was only the hood. I was never outside the hood. I was never heading the suits or something. And 2008, so I came home from the basketball hall, and my father screamed, hey, you have a letter, you have a letter. I would say, who's going to send a letter to me? I mean, I'm just a, you know, a normal guy. <laughs> and um, when I look at the letter, so it was from the royal castle. So it sends my name. It was like gold on it. You know, it, for me, I was shocked. <laughs> so I opened it up, and I read it. And it said, congratulations. You've been nominated to one of the best leaders in 2008. And it was 643 nominees. And I was just like, I'm just a basketball coach, and I just work with the kids. I know for sure I'm never going like, to succeed to be in top 100. I came to top 100, I came to top 10, I came to top 3, and finally I won. So my first visit in Stockholm, in the capital city of Sweden, was not at, uh, to eat at McDonald's. It was actually to meet the king. In 2008, I was in the royal castle. I shake, air, I shake hand with the king. My legs were shaking, you know. And I saw my father, he was like crying all the way. And when I was like shaking hand with the king, I was just saying that if I can do it, every other kid can do it. And that was the biggest reason I started my organization. That's incredible. And I mean, what a, what a story, Admir. The, the strength and the courage it must have taken on your part to go from such a difficult situation, having to leave your country, then integrating into a new society. I think you experienced for yourself the difficulty, the adversity, how not easy it is to be that newcomer. And now you're giving the opportunity for newcomers to feel at home in Sweden in their own way. Can you tell us about how your programming does that for the kids that go through your program? Yeah. I, when I founded the organization, the first thing the society looks like is that the kids and the doesn't be seen confirmed. It always leads to a lot of self-esteem and self-confidence but also to succeed in the school, get in the high school, even later get a job. And if you don't have a job, it's easy for you to get along in the destructive areas. The other problem is that a lot of big conferences and been to, so everybody's like talking about solution, about uh, integration, segregation, and all those kind of stuff. But everyone, will like when we're working with integration stuff, so everybody's focused on the integrated area where all the immigrant is. And nobody is focusing on an area where no immigrants is. So for my point was that as much I'm going to focus on the people in the immigrant area, I'm also going to focus on the Swedes who are totally outside the hood, mm -hmm. who never been in the hood. Right, so bringing those two communities together exactly. that otherwise wouldn't have contact. Exactly, because if I'm coming to the hood and starting to create the values of the good leadership and the, the possibilities and all so kind of, and suddenly if I don't actually work with the same values on the other side, probably it's going to be some kind of the crux between the, those two, yeah. And then, so we will focus on the both areas. And what we do is that we match the Swedish curriculum. So we come into the gym lessons and uh, introduce the meaningful activities. So I remember when we had a professional boxer, we took them to the nicest area in Sweden. I mean, people were scared because we had a different color. And they were like, you know, having a lot of thoughts of us. Does it going to hit us? <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah, so, and this is the things that we actually do. Uh, one, one of the things also, the great, we have a lot of stories, but one of the stories is that we have uh, professional football players who are amazing in Sweden. And this guy is uh, Rome. He's, uh, yeah, he's coming, he's a uh, Rome background. Mm -hmm. So when he was like having a lesson, so everybody is listening at him and the kids from the, those nice areas, because he was in the, one of the nicest areas in Sweden. And he was in that school and uh, yeah, kids love him because he was so, so good. And after the class, we gathered the kids and we asked them like, oh, so what do you think about the Romes? And there was one of the kids, she said, oh, they want the dirty ones. And the other was, oh, they were those who are sitting and begging. And they have a lot of, lot of different thoughts. And <laughs> suddenly the leader came out and he just stepped out and said, oh, by the way, I'm the Rome. 
So what happens with those kids is totally the same. They were like shocked because they were like thinking of maybe one of the backgrounds. If you have a background in Bosnia, you probably like this because my mother told me that. And suddenly when they meet the person, it's totally different, something different else. Mm -hmm. So this also is for us is like even to working with those kids uh, in, and implement those, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, th I think w what your programming does in a lot of ways is b just by exposing people to something different. You know, it's so easy when we started the session, we were talking about that storyline, right? How we each have our own stories. And it's, we look at anyone in this audience, anyone on the street, we can only assume what somebody's story is, what their background is, but we don't know. And we don't know until we get to know somebody more personally. And yet, society is not necessarily set up to have different types of people communicate, get to know one another. So really, this is kind of bridging that divide and challenging people's, I'm, I would even say, prejudices in some cases, right? And ideas about certain people who are the other, right? Those people, they're like this. And all of a sudden, you have a really great uh, sports session or learning session with somebody who you admire and you think is amazing. And you find out, oh, oh, they're from that other class. I didn't recognize that. Or from that other group, I didn't recognize that. There's a, a fantastic quote that I really loved. I think I found it on your website or one of your many profiles that you have online. Um, it says that your goal is to increase integration through Sport Without Borders by working with children and young people from all social classes so that the concepts of we and they no longer exist. I think that's such a powerful idea to be aiming towards. How do we bridge people together instead of creating that divide or deepening the divide that already exists in society? And so on that note, I wonder, you know, We've got an incredible audience here today. Everyone has an opportunity to bridge that gap somehow, to become closer, to become more inclusive, to be open to diversity. What would you say to our audience could be something that they could do when they go home to create change now in their lives? Everything is about that was for me important was the reason for being. I mean, uh, wh why I'm doing this? I'm going to do and what actually I want to achieve with this and how can I measure that thing I do and what I had the three things I had with me just was the, the courage to keep going you know I got so many no's uh, and one of, one of the stories was that when we had a meeting in a Swedish royal castle so I came with a cap so just like in the entrance just like here almost like the people like oh what you doing here so no, I'm actually happy to meet with the king. But the thing is, like, for the most of the people is, if you don't look as a businessman, suddenly you're not a businessman. Mm. And this is, was the, one of the challenges. I just want to, you know, challenge it because it's very important. And that's why the, all, almost the, uh, every time that we start a new city, so we bring royal family to the hood. So the, actually the little guy who everything thinks that it's possible, suddenly he meet the king. And you say, okay, I met the king, now I can do whatever I want. Cool. So one of those things that I had with me was courage. The other thing was compassion. It's like not just to, to uh, yeah, you need to understand people, you need to know people. And the third thing is the power of action. It's like not just talk about it, do it by yourself. Mm. It's easy for us, like when you're on a conference, you feel, oh, this is very important. And then you go home and then you're doing the same thing. Yeah. So this is like for me, it's just like, even do it too. Don't, don't just talk about it. Yeah, that's it. You have to put that compassion and courage into action. You can't, it, conversation is not enough. Yeah. And I think that that's a beautiful note to leave us on, Edmir. Uh, we have a fantastic opportunity as a group here to create change and not just talk about it. So I would like to offer a challenge as well on behalf of Edmir and all of the speakers here on stage today for everyone in the audience to take a moment today, even if it's just a short moment, to consider your story, your narrative, and what people might not see or know about you. Think about your challenges and what you've struggled through. And extend that self-compassion and self-understanding just a little bit wider today. 
to the stories that you might not see of other people and what they're struggling through. And see if you can just be a little more compassionate, a little more courageous, and turn all of that into just one action for change now. Thank you. Thank you.